This is the key to the worksheet on section 2.3 part 2. Number one, you, you're given a linear function um, and it's in slope intercept form and you want to find the slope of the y-intercept and you want to use this information to graph this line. Okay? Alright, so notice that it's already in slope intercept form because remember slope intercept form is this. Let me go ahead and write that here. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And remember f of x means the same thing as y. So this is 1 third x minus 4. So in this case, since it's already in slope intercept form, the slope is 1 third, so the coefficient of x, and the y-intercept is your constant, negative 4. So you've got to make sure you say negative 4, not a positive 4. Those are two different y-intercepts. All right, and then once you use this information to graph this line, do not use a t-table. You must use slope and intercept. So, so to use slope intercept, you must remember to graph a line. You need two points. Well, the y-intercept is already one of your points. That's one point right there. So you're going to plot that point. So the gra graph's going to cross. The line's going to cross the y-axis at negative four. So that's here, right here. So that's where the line's going to cross the y-axis. And then from that point, you're going to use the slope to find another point. Okay, so the slope, remember, is one-third, which is rise over run. Notice that both the rise and the run are positive. So we always deal with the rise first. Uh, you don't have to. You can deal with the run first, but let's just deal with the rise first. So um, from your point, from a point that's already on the line, which you already know is, this, is the y-intercept, uh, do not make the mistake of sort of the origin, because the origin is not a point on the line. This is the point on the line. So from this point, you're going to go up one because my rise is positive one. So you go up one. If this was a negative one, you go down one. So I'm going to go up one, and then my run is a positive three. So I'll go up one. Don't put a dot there. Just This is where you are, though. And I'm going to go to the right three. One, two, three. So this is where your other point is right here. Okay? And then you just um, connect those those dots with the line, and there's there's your line. Okay? All right, number two. Notice that this is not in slope-intercept form, so, but remember, you do want to write this in slope-intercept form. Write the equation in slope-intercept form. So to get this in slope-intercept form, you got to get y by itself. So do a little bit of work. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. Oops, minus 1 equals 0. So uh, I'm going to get y by itself. So I'm gonna, I need to get rid of these two terms here. So first of all, I'm going to, let's just say add 1 first to both sides. And so the 1's uh, add up to 0. Negative 1 and positive 1, 0. So I get 2x plus y equal 1. Then I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Combine like terms, 2x and a negative 2x is 0. And I get y equals, and let's put this in uh, y equals mx plus b. So put the x term first. So negative 2x plus 1. So there's your slope intercept form. So y equals negative 2x plus 1. So once it's in slope intercept form, you can tell me the slope. So the slope is a coefficient of x, whatever you multiply the variable by. So that's negative 2, and the y-intercept is 1. Okay? So the graph's going to cross the y-axis. The line's going to cross the y-axis at 1. This is where it's going to cross the y-axis. All right, now, um, sometimes it's a good idea to rewrite the slope as a fraction. So I'm going to rewrite negative 2 as negative 2 over 1. Negative 2 over 1 is the same thing as negative 2. So my rise is a negative 2, and my run is a positive 1, okay? So remember, to graph the other point, remember, you need two points to graph a line. I already know one. That was your y-intercept. That's one of your points. So I, I plot the point, um, the y-intercept being 1. From that point, I'm going to go down two units. Since my rise is negative, I go down two units, 1, 2. So that's where I'm at. My run's a positive 1, so since it's positive, I'm going to go to the right, one. So there's the other point. And then you join the line, and that's it. That's your answer. Okay, number three. Okay, so now this is going to be a little bit more challenging than number two. See, it was pretty easy in number two to get the variable y by itself because the coefficient of y was a positive one. So it wasn't that difficult. Here, though, um, if you're not careful, you could make a, an error or two. 
Um, what I'm going to do though, to be to make it a little bit easier, is is um, since this coefficient of y is negative, I'm just going to bring it to the other side. Because what's going to happen is if I add 2y to both sides, like this, my coefficient of y is positive. So that makes things a lot easier for me, rather than bringing the 3x and the negative 8 to the other side. Let's just bring the 2y to the other side. Combine like terms, I get 3x minus 8 equal 2y. And now all I do, I'm going to go ahead and kind of rewrite this right here. Um, so 3x minus 8 equal 2y. All right, so the next step is to get y by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2, just like this, which you do one side, you do the other. And these two divide out, and notice what you get. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. y equals 3x divided by 2. So you're going to write this as two separate fractions. You're going to write it in slope-intercept form. Don't leave it like this. Write it in slope-intercept form, mx plus b. So 3x divided by 2, so 3 halves x minus, and then 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, so there's your slope intercept form. y equals 3 halves x minus 4. Okay, now, um, and then uh, the slope is 3 halves, and the y intercept is negative 4. And that's all they wanted. They just, uh, they didn't ask you to graph it or anything. That's it. You're done. Now, let me just say this. If you did, I mean, kind of rewrite this just to show you. If you did leave negative 2x on the left side, you would subtract 3x from both sides just like this, combine like terms, I get negative 2y minus 8 equals a negative 3x, then you would have to add 8 to both sides just like this, combine like terms, I get negative 2y equal negative 3x plus 8, then you would have to divide both sides by negative 2. Now, this way you have to be careful. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. So you get y equals. Now, again, you're going to write as two fractions. But remember, negative divided by negative. I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of rewrite this. This is what you get. So negative 3 has divided by negative 2 plus 8 divided by negative 2. But then you get y equals a negative divided by negative is a positive. So you have to remember that. So it's just 3x over 2. Don't leave it as negative divided by negative. And then a positive divided by negative is a negative, and a divided by 2 is 4. So notice this is the same as this. Okay? But it was easier. Notice how much easier it was just to bring the 2y to the side. Okay, so over here is this is the same thing that, that we had here. So um, again, I'm just going to do it one time here. So it is easier to bring the 4y to this side. So I'm going to add 4y to both sides, just like this. 4y. Combine like terms, I get uh, 3x plus 12 equals 4y. Okay, so 3x plus 12 equals 4y. Then to get y by itself, I divide both sides by 4. And so 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times y is y. Equal, and then write this as two fractions. So that's 3x divided by 4 plus 12 divided by 4. And then simplifying this, I get y equals 3 or it's x plus 3. So there's your slope intercept form. And so, um, oops, they, okay. So I didn't read the directions very carefully. So notice that, that uh, um, they, that's not the way they wanted you to do it. So make sure you follow directions. So let me go ahead and see, I just realized that they want you to find the x and y intercept. Now, don't do it this way. You gotta follow directions, always follow directions. Okay, so I'm just cross this out. Follow directions. All right, so let me go ahead and redo this. So that's going to be 3x minus 4y plus 12 equals 0. Okay, follow directions. So I want you to graph using the intercepts. So to find the x-intercept, to find the x-intercept, remember that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. Wherever the graph crosses the x-axis, the y-coordinate is 0. So you let y equals 0. And so basically all you do is when you let y equals 0, this term goes away, so you get 3x plus 12 equals 0, and just solve for x. So subtract 12 from both sides. Combine like terms, I get 3x equals a negative 12. Divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I get the x-intercept to be the x-intercept, negative 12 divided by 3 is a negative 4. So that's your x-intercept. Now, they do want you to list the x-intercept as an ordered pair, though, so I've always followed directions. So as an ordered pair, 
uh, you can say negative 4, 0. And then when you graph it, that is this right here. Okay? All right, now to find the y-intercept, I'll go ahead and rewrite the, the equation over. So 3x minus 4y equal, oh, plus 12 equals 0. So um, to find the y-intercept, you will let x equal 0. So when let x equal 0, 3 times 0 is 0. So this term goes away. So you're left with a negative 4y plus 12 equals 0. Subtracting 12 from both sides. Combine like terms, I get negative 4y equals a negative 12. Getting y by itself, I need to divide both sides by negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. So I get the y-intercept to equal a negative divided by negative is a positive. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So as an ordered pair, though, as an ordered pair, a y-intercept is 0, 3. All right. And so I plot that point, 0, 3 is here. And I connect the dots. I connect those points with a line. And so there's your graph. OK? All right, so again, be careful. Like I did, I, I, I wasn't reading. I went straight to this without reading the directions. you got to read the directions. So Because if you had done it this way, you wouldn't got any points because you didn't follow directions. So follow directions. OK, so that's the... So that's the end of this worksheet. So this is a key to section 2.3, part 2.